This video is sponsored by You Wish. Yeah, unfortunately, nobody sponsored this video. But the topic of today's video, how to work with the engineers as UX designers, was submitted by Amun. So. Thank you, Amun. Claps for you. Personally, I also find this topic super useful and relevant because that's something that you have to know and have to do sooner or later. At some point, you are going to work with software engineers. You design it, they build it. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through all the nuts and bolts and nuances of working with engineers, how to work with them more smoothly and effectively. If you are a junior designer just entering the workforce and started to work with engineers, you will find the tips and practices in this video useful for your day-to-day -day work. If you are still a design student looking for internships, stay for the video as well. Because anything that I talk about in this video is exactly how you might want to talk about in your UX interview. Meaning this video has the potential to help you age your interview and get you closer to an offer. Wow, what a long intro. But hopefully you get to see how useful this video might be. Now let's get started and roll the intro. Good morning everyone, my name is Justine and I'm a designer working in Silicon Valley. The agenda for this video is quite simple. It comes in two parts. Part one, I'm gonna highlight four common issues working with software engineers and I will give you the corresponding actionable items that you can use right away. Literally, you can use them tomorrow if you're working. In part two, I'll give you some examples of how these can easily be interview questions and how you might be able to answer them perfectly. Now, without further ado, let's dive right into it. Common issue one, how to speak up. You might be afraid to speak up, hesitant to speak up, hesitant to say engineers are wrong. If you design a screen to have a 30 pixel margin, but engineers only implemented 20 pixels, what do you do? They spend hours building out the feature, now you tell them they have to spend more time fixing it? Spoiler alert, yes. The action for this one is quite simple. You just have to tell them that it's off. Let's fix it. There are two reasons for this. Reason one, you are the designer. You have the total control, total power in raising any issue regarding design, design concern, any misalignment, colors off, hold it within your rights to do so. And in fact, that's what you were hired to do, to make sure the app, the service, the product is well polished, to nurture the brand that has good user experience and good usability. Reason number two, they, as software engineers, can totally miss your mark. They might not have the sharp eye in discerning the differences. So if you don't speak up, they will not fix it, so it will be wrong. And anything that is wrong in the app, in the product, in the service, can be compounded in the long run. So fixing it now, you're actually saving more time in the long run. So you're better off telling them to fix it than not to. Common problem two, I didn't interact too much with engineers. What do I do? Well, you technically should because you guys are on the same team, they're your teammates, they're actually your ally because you design it, they are the one implementing it. So basically you guys should be friends. And friends interact with each other fairly frequently. And hence, you guys should interact with each other more. So here are some actions you can take. Action one, you can schedule some weekly check-in, really casual ones, saying that how's it going, how's the project going, anything I can see, you have any marks to show me, you have any questions, do the marks that I show you make sense, anything you need me to clarify. So in here, you're asking the progress, but also offering the help. It's easy for them to take in the input. And being offered the help is always a positive thing, especially if they're too shy to ask you about something in the mock, you're actually doing them a favor. So do do a weekly check-in if you don't already do so. Action two, have a final review if you have not set that up already. This is a more formal way to review the design with a bigger group, especially with more designers or with your manager to double check as a final checkpoint to make sure the final implementation is up to spec. Most of the time, if you do enough check-ins in between, the final review can go fairly fast and smoothly. But again, the point is to set it up, have regular cadence of a meeting and interacting with the engineers on your team. Common issue three, what if they don't listen to you? Engineers can push back for various reasons. They say, oh, we don't have enough time, not enough bandwidth, this is too hard to do, this is technically challenging, all sorts of reasons. But technically, that's not the end of the conversation. There are many things you can do. Action one, in here, communication becomes very important. If you're close to them, it becomes easier. But still, you have to talk to them. You first have to really explain in detail your design rationales, your design decisions, your design choices. Oh, I designed this, I put this here because of A, B, C, D, E. 
Does that make sense? What are your thoughts? That can really quickly change the narrative as they understand where you're coming from. Oh, it's for the users. Oh, this can be potentially confusing. I see, I see. Oh, 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 oh. All these O's will help them justify them spending more time to take the action mile. Action two, go get coffee with them. Get to know them better. Set up additional meeting to really understand why, but maybe in a more casual setting so they can open up a little bit more. And because I'm a designer, I don't know every single detail about the engineering side, what the complications could be. And therefore, don't take no for an answer. Really dig into ask them why. Understand from their perspective. Maybe they haven't told me the true reasons yet. Don't linger on what they say, but why they say what they say. There could be a whole lot of different things behind the surface. Once you find out, there might be many ways to get around it. Action three, if they're being super unreasonable, which could happen, but not too often, then it's not really your problem anymore. You should talk to your manager about it and let them handle it. Common issue four, how to hand off design mock, design asset. First of all, you should have some basic knowledge of what to redline, what to measure, what to annotate in your design mocks. And over time, you will learn what is important and what is not to highlight or red line. And to do that, there are a lot of great Figma tools and plugins already. So you can see there's one here, it's another one. So action one, if you don't know any of those tools to red line and mark your marks, play with those tools, get familiar with those. Action two, you can totally look at how material design red lines things and look at, for example, how iOS document their interaction, like this example, drag and drop. So if you have a drag and drop interaction in your design, you can probably document it as in a similar fashion as Apple. Action three, ask them what they need. What size of the icon do you need? How big are the images? What do I annotate? To me, that's actually the quickest way to understand what kind of documentation will actually help them, help the engineers to build my design. Again, design thinking. We have a goal, we have a need here to make, to create more effective Eng and design collaboration. Who are the users and stakeholders? Engineers. What are their needs? You ask them, right? That's equivalent to the interview in your design process. There's no guessing, trial and error. You ask them, they tell you, then you have it. So if they say always mark and annotate, redline the image size, then redline the image size. If they say always mark the sign margins in the app, then you mark the sign margins in the marks. Action four, you can approach it more generically. It doesn't have to limit to what you have to redline or spec out. Really ask them, what is the best way to help them work faster? Way, maybe where to put the assets? Do I put them in a folder? Do I leave them in a Figma? How do I name them? You don't know what you don't know. So asking them is the best way to find out. So now here comes part two. Sample questions in a UX interview. So these are real questions that I actually got asked in my interview spree in 2019. I will have that video link up here and description down below if you wanna check that out. So for example, I will get a question like this. How do you work with engineers? And this is actually a fairly straightforward, simple question. I say, in my past experience, I use Figma as the tool. So we have a single source of truth for the flow, for the marks. So the engineers can go into the same file to look at the flows, measure the spacing and specs. I ask them if there's anything that I need to redline and call out or highlight specifically so that we can make sure we cover all the important and easy to miss details in the design. Generally speaking, I interact with them on a weekly basis at least. I also ping them regularly to check in to see any progress and to see if they have any questions or anything that they want me to clarify in Figma. As part of the development process, we also have a final review as the, the final gateway or checkpoint to catch any last minute bugs uh, or mistakes happen in the implementation. Now you see they are pretty much the same answers as action items. Second example, another question. Can you give me an example of when you received some pushback from engineers and what did you do to move forward with the feedback? Then I can say, well, you know, in this case, uh, communication is really important. I first have to really explain my design decisions, why I do A, B, C, and D from a user standpoint. It helps them eliminate those confusion, help them do this thing faster. So that helped them to understand where design is coming from. And then I'll ask for what their thoughts are uh, on my rationale. I will also have some coffee chats with them in a slightly more casual setting to really understand why, because it's totally possible that there's something that I'm missing from the design side, because I know I'm a designer, I'm not an engineer, I don't know every single detail about engineering. So I try not to linger on what they say, but why they say what they say. There could be something deeper behind it. Once I find out why, there could be many ways to get around it. You see, they're the same thing, exact same thing. As you might notice, 
when you actually work with engineers, you will start to get a sense of how they work and you develop your relationships with them. And then you have all these answers ready naturally and organically. And then at that point, interviews are fairly straightforward. If you haven't worked with engineers yet, that's also fine. Try to look up more information on how designers work with them. What are some of the secrets of creating good collaboration or simply rewind this video and watch it again. So what do you guys think? Does everything make sense? Hope I sufficiently answered the question that you have, Amun. If any of you have more follow-up questions on how designers work with engineers, let me know in the comment section down below. Here are some related topics that I plan to talk about in future videos. If you have preferences of which one you want me to talk about first, let me know. If you think of something that's not here, feel free to let me know as well. Well, that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. If you find this video useful or insightful, please destroy the like button for the YouTube algorithm. This is still a small channel, so every like counts, and I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. If you want to see more UX career tips or design videos like this, consider smash the subscribe button as well. Doing so will tremendously help the channel and motivate me to produce more high quality content down the road. Have fun following your passion and keep designing a better future. See you on the next video. Cheers!